The Summer Games are back. That's right, the Tokyo Olympics are finally here. We have been waiting so long to see some of our favorite stars like Simone Biles and Katie Ledecky compete for the chance to bring home the gold. But aside from swimming and gymnastics and the other sports that America loves to watch, we've also got some new sports on the docket. So what are these new sports like? How are they judged? We talk to the athletes themselves to figure out what we can expect from Tokyo. Up first, we'll catch a wave with U.S. Olympic surfers Carissa Moore and Caroline Marks to learn more about surfing, which is making its debut in Tokyo. If you're watching competitive surfing for the first time, it's really fun. There's a lot going on. Usually there's between two to five people in the water at the same time, and you're given a time limit of around 30 minutes, and you're scored on your best two waves. You are scored based upon your ability to combine maneuvers with speed, power, flow, the criticalness of your maneuvers. And what's really cool about surfing is that no wave is ever the same and every surfer has their own interpretation and expression on the wave. Surfing, it's such a unique sport, you know, we're relying on Mother Nature and I think that's so different than any other sport and I think people are going to be very interested in that that are watching the Olympics I've never seen surfing and you get scored in your top two waves and whoever has the higher total wins. If you're watching surfing and you want to throw out some surfing lingo, I don't know. Something that always comes naturally to me is, that was sick and sick is just, that was really good, or that was insane, that was really well done. Let's head back to land for our next explainer. This sport has been popular for years, but you'll typically find it at an X Games rather than the global stage. But this year, skateboarding will be an Olympic sport. We catch up with Zion Wright and Jagger Eaton to find out what you can expect from the men and women competing in the event. Nowadays, when you see a contest, it's gonna usually be a street contest, or a park contest. A park contest is a mixture of transition and like flowy, more flowy style. And street style is gonna be handrails, stairs, ledges. In park, you're gonna really wanna look out for speed and patterns. People are gonna be going, they're gonna be doing really long grinds, they're gonna be going really high, and they're gonna be going what kind of pattern they choose is, is the way the judge is gonna score it. And for street, what you're really gonna wanna look out for, and this is gonna be pretty obvious, is the big section. The big section is the park, is the part of the park right in the middle, which has the biggest handrails and it's, you know, it's the highest risk. And everyone looks different on a skateboard. Everyone has a different style and it just, even going to the Olympics and how just creative it is and how everyone looks different on a skateboard, I think that's really cool and it's more of an art form than a competitive sport. Climbing has taken the world by storm, in large part due to documentaries and the growth of climbing gyms nationwide. The IOC has recognized its popularity as well. Sport climbing will be one of the newest events in Tokyo. American climbers Nathaniel Coleman, Colin Duffy, and Kyra Condi tell us everything we need to know ahead of the games. You can look at the three disciplines of climbing um, in two different categories. Speed is in one category because it's so like specific. It's such a specific aspect of climbing and it requires a different skill set. Bouldering and lead climbing are based on the difficulty of the route and it takes uh, creative problem solving to do well in competition. Bouldering and sport climbing are really unique because the climbs that you do every time are different. So there's an element of problem solving that I don't think you see in many other sports. So everything's equally weighted and the way it's, the, it's ranked is uh, it like multiplies your ranking for each discipline. Getting a first in any discipline is like very heavily weighted, so like in finals the winner of speed, even if they end up, say, eighth place in bouldering and lead, they, based on like the multiplier, they might still end up in third. The main vocabulary that you need to know when talking to climbers is that move is nails, means it's hard. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Beta is a really good one. That is the way you do a climb. So if you're like, what's the beta to this climb? Somebody will tell you, oh, you go right hand to that hold, you go left hand to the next hold. There's a couple words for the actual holds themselves. So a hold that's just your fingertips is called a crimp. Um, something that you only use a couple fingers in, so like two fingers, it would be a two finger pocket. Since this is climbing's first time in the Olympics, uh, I think we're really setting the stage for what Olympic climbing will be. Uh, and I think that's really cool and really exciting. Uh, I didn't have climbing to look to in the Olympics as a kid, so I was a huge Olympic fan, but didn't have that goal of being at the Olympics because I didn't think it was possible. And so it really excites me that kids who are growing up climbing now can look up to us and have that dream. 
Basketball is a mainstay in the summer games, but this summer we'll have a new twist on it as the IOC debuts three-on-three -three basketball as its own event. We caught up with a few WNBA players to explain to us why three-on-three -three is so exciting. For anyone who's new to three-on-three, -three, they should just know that it's really fast. It's really physical. The refs don't call fouls. There's no stop of possession unless it goes out of bounds. So when we shoot the ball, you just grab it and you keep playing. It's played on half court. It's only 10 minutes and the point is different. It's two points for three, one point for anywhere inside the three point line. You know, it's so fast paced. It's just, it's just a lot of fun to watch. I think it's kind of got a street vibe to it. It's something that you know, people can see and enjoy watching, I think. Three is three is, is, a, is a whole nother level. I mean, from a chemistry uh, standpoint, it's great. I mean, we all play well with each other. We complement each other well. We know each other's games and, and spots that we like on the court. So, I mean, it's just great. And we'll just continue picking up where we left off it. It's a lot more intimate. It's a lot more nuanced because of, you know, there's only three people out there, four on the team, and there's a lot more space. So, you, you know, you're just working with people a little bit closer than you would be with a five on five team. I mean, if you watch us play for more than a minute, you'd see that we move the ball, we help each other get open. Uh, it's very selfless. You know, we all have the same goal of trying to win. So um, it's fun basketball to watch. Our last explainer features a sport that's been around forever, but it will be new to Tokyo this year. Karate is making its debut and we caught up with Sakura Kokumai to learn how this event will be judged. Karate has two disciplines, kata and kumite. Kata means form in Japanese, kumite means sparring, fighting. So in kumite side, you will see two athletes in one ring. They will have their mouth, mouth guard, shin guards, hand pads, and you will see them literally in a fight. With kata, you would see one athlete go into the ring and performs a sequence of movements. It tells a story of a fight. There's a lot of flow into it, speed, power, and I would say it's a form of art. The, the referees are looking at techniques and athleticism. Everything is very serious. You will definitely not see us smiling in, in the ring during a performance. So it's very intense. And when everything is done, we'll bow out, and that's when we'll get our points. During the performance, hiai is the term that we use uh, to express the yelling part of it. <laughs> Might be fun to just remember, just to even talk about it when you're watching TV. You're like, oh. That was a loud ki. <laughs> that was a scary one. <laughs> you know? It's just one of those, like one thing that people can, I, usually people talk about <laughs> when I perform because it always scares them. <laughs> so it seems like we have a lot to look forward to in Tokyo. Between swimming, gymnastics, and basketball, we'll also get a healthy dose of new sports and new athletes to have their chance at winning gold.